Quilts, and we're back with our second lesson in electric quilt or EQ8. And last time we talked about making a sampler quilt, but I didn't show you how to actually find your project. So I have the opening screen of EQ8 showing here. And in order to open our previous project, we just click on open an existing project. It will bring up this pop-up box. It's called the Project Helper. And we named our quilts T-Quilts Videos. Sometimes if you're on this screen, you click it to open it once. And you may not know that it's your quilt. Or it's the actual file you're looking for. You can actually use these arrow keys and you can zoom down to make sure it is in, indeed the file that you are looking for. So we can just click OK. And then it's asking us do we want to add, sort, delete items or close. We actually just want to open a previous project. So I'm going to use this slider bar to go down until I get to the last one that we showed on our screen before we took a break. It's this one here with the burgundy. So we'll say edit. And then it pulls it back up into your screen and say you wanted to edit something, you can just go back over here under design. You can edit your blocks, your fabrics, your borders, you could also change your layout. Say you might want to add an additional row to it. You can also do that. That's the nice thing about EQ is that you don't have to have multiple copies of a paper layout, like a graph paper, in order to re-modify or change your layout. So what we want to do today is we actually want to make a quilt block from scratch. So we're going to go over here to block and click on block work table. Once we get on block work table, we just click we want to do a new pieced block. You could do an applique block, you can do a piece and applique block, and you can create a serendipity. Right now we just want to click on new piece block. Then it opens up the drawing board and then it gives your block a particular size and then you can do easy draw, poly draw or open library. Up here you have the easy draw block is what it is and then it tells you what the actual block size is. So we want to click on easy draw. And then from Easy Draw, it opens up a whole nother menu up on the top here. One thing you notice is that it says block width and height. So we're going to change our block width to 9 inches. No, we're going to change our block height to 9 inches. And we're going to leave our block width at 12. And then you've got where it has snaps, horizontal and vertical. Snaps are these dots in here that tells it where it's going to snap every time you put in a want to draw a line inside of your actual grid. So what we want to do is try to get a number that's divisible both by 12 and by 9. So let's put in 36. And 
and we still got our uh, our dots are not in line with the one inch grid markings drawings so I just want to go back up here try another number like 48 this is actually the hardest part for me is trying to get my actual lines made up especially when the number is large if I'm doing a 6 by 5 block 30 isn't bad and so we've got this line here that I don't want it's not connected to anything um, if I go into color <laughs> and just go back into draw then it will disappear because the line wasn't attached to anything so what we want to do is we want to make some scrappy village blocks I'm actually going to be using this as my next block of the month tomorrow or shall I say block of the week tomorrow because I've been putting up more than one block of the month this month so we're going to take and take our pencil tool, which is our line tool here. We already have it clicked. We are going to click up at the top at the zero and six inch mark, and we're going to click and drag. And I'm having difficulties with my mouse right now, so I need to get to a smoother place. But we're going to click and drag. Next, we're going to go to the three inch line here, and we're going to click and drag a line all the way across. So now we have a giant plus. We want to make these two sections flying geese. So if we're at the six, we want to go from three down to each three line over here. So this three at the top, we want to take down to the three at zero and the three at six. So we just, again, click and drag. And then we just repeat that on the other side. And you could copy, highlight and copy this and paste it over here. But I just find when it's only a couple of things that I'm doing the same, that it's just easier for me to just quickly draw the line. So these rows here... We want to put, we're actually making cottages and we're going to make them so that they finish at two inch strips. So we're just going to draw a line from the center line all the way down every two inches. And do the same over here. So we'd go down at eight and 10. So just for clarification, you already had your um, center line here, and you drew a line at two, four, you already had six, and then we drew lines at eight and 10. Now we just need to make our doors, and we're actually going to make our door three inches. So we're going to actually go to the six line, and in between two and four, you're going to draw a line straight across. And then we're going to repeat that and draw a line from eight to 10, still on that six line. Now this is not in the right position here. So what I need to do is go over and pick the edit tool. I put it in the wrong position. I know that we want our line to actually be right here. So let's go to line. If I go right here, this is where my line should be. And then when I go, I gotta click the pick tool. And then once it's highlighted, you can hit delete. So that's my mistake. And I am just going to go ahead and leave that in the video because it's like a learning experience. And it's one of those things, if you don't do that feature a lot, then you forget and you have to do it. So let's go into 
color. We're going to click on the color tab up here. And now we have our actual house. And we can go ahead and put some color in this. Again, we're making a scrappy, scrappy village block. So our blocks are going to be all kinds of colors. So I am just going to pick some colors. Not going to necessarily be the prettiest colors. But yeah, we'll make a yellow door. And we'll make a red door. So I'm just clicking on any fabrics over here in the fabric tools when we clicked on color it automatically popped into fabric tools and so i'm just picking any of these colors here i kind of like this green with this yellow so that's my house base with the red let's see what do we want for red let's do gray put a gray on our red and now we need rooftops and again we're making ours very scrappy so it doesn't really matter what colors they are they actually want it to be a very colorful village and then you have your sky fabrics and again they don't necessarily have to be blue but I'm just going to make mine blue because I think it will be interesting Oh, I think it will be interesting <laughs> so yes so now we have our block done and you know what we always should do before we even colored we should have saved this to the project book but we're gonna go ahead and save it now so now we have our little village so we know that our blocks are 12 by 9 so what we want to do now let's just say what do I do with this of course you can tell it that you want to print it and export and it says what do you want to do do you want to print the block a picture of the block do you want to print templates so it would print a template page for each one of these pieces in the block do you want a foundation piece this block which you could you could do it in sections here they've got it sectioned out for you where you've got one two and then three sections that you could paper piece or do you want a rotary cut and so let's do rotary cut we're going to use the size from the work table we're not get, we don't have a name so we can edit and say the name of the block is remember we've got to delete what's up there we're naming this scrappy village And then we're going to click preview. So once I got preview, I am going to be making this block, but I already have the instructions for what I need to make this block already because it's a Gill optional block. So I'm not actually going to print this. And I can see that my computer is already slowing down on commands. So I closed out of there and then I'm going to close out of this print preview. I want to show you another feature that you can use as well. Is if you've is that you've got this export button. And I know you're hearing noise. I've got the lawn man outside working next door. So We'll have to bear with me on this but i click the export button up at the top you can export this as an image a selection or a meta file so let's talk about exporting it as an image when you export it as an image it's just asking you where do you want to save it and so it's already popped up to my last folder that I've been working in and that's okay because I will be making a video with this and will be using this image in my video so I'm just going to name it Scrappy Village and say save and when you're saving things on your computer just make sure that you're saving the item as it should be so it's asking me 
dimensions of image export image block of file and they want to know what's the x uh what do i want it to export my image as and i want it to be sized according to my pattern so my width is 12 and my height is nine because i want to keep my image consistent with how the block's going to actually look the block isn't a square so i don't want it to save as a square another thing that you can do if you didn't want to save the entire image you only want to save a particular portion of an image say you only wanted an image of the flying geese you can do selection and when you come over onto the field you can just click and drag whatever it is that you want to save so maybe we might need to zoom in so that we can see this a lot better I'm just going I got my zoom and I'm just going to click and drag so that I can see it up close and now I'm going to go up in this upper right corner click and drag down until I got the entire flying geese covered and then let go and it says do you want to save it as a file do you want to print it or do you want to copy it to the Windows clipboard? Saving it as a file, we just did that with the actual entire block that I just showed you. We, I've showed you how to print, but I you haven't seen the actual printout, but I've showed you how to print. Another thing you can do is copy to the Windows clipboard and you go, what's that? Whenever you copy something, it's in Windows memory, or I'm using a Windows-based system, so I'm sure Mac has something similar as well. But it's going to remember what it was. So let's say that you were making a paper pattern and you needed to copy this into, say, a word processing program. So you'd click Copy to Windows Clipboard. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. So uh, it looks like nothing has happened, but it has actually copied that into memory. And when we get Microsoft Word open, if you were making a pattern, then you would actually come in here and paste this into your Word document so that you could do this. So I'll just say test pattern. Give it some identifying information and then I did control V for paste or you could go up to the top and paste but I just use my keys I do control C to copy whenever I'm in something and control plus the V key as in Victor will paste so you can't see the top of my screen because my screen stops recording right here so I can't show you where you would normally click the paste but this is what we just did. We copied in this actual flying geese unit. And over here, I've got it, my N key. If I just hit enter, then you'll see that it will pop in. The nice thing about it is if I click on it, I can resize this by grabbing the handles. There's other ways you can resize. So whatever size you need for this to fit into your pattern, you could do that. So that's how you actually get more into creating the pattern. So I'm going to go back down to the bottom. I'm going to go back into EQ8. And I do want to close out Microsoft Word. Let me do that. And I don't want to save that. <laughs> Just to clear up our screen. I don't want you to get confused. So we've got the screen zoomed in in order to get our full screen back we just go over here and click on fit to work table and it puts it right back into the actual sizing mode so i don't know how many minutes we've we've been about 20 minutes so i'm just going to go ahead and end this lesson here Be my other phone's ringing <laughs> i'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here because I don't want this video to get too long but this is how you would make a basic block and then we're going to come back next time perhaps and talk about how to 
make or just some of the blocks that are in EQ, like how to take some of those blocks so that you're not designing from scratch all the time and then make a new pattern or design with that. So that's it for this video. I will see you all next time. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.